Welcome, everybody, to the News 12 exclusive What I Want to Know show. We've covered several topics in the past. We haven't done this for quite some time, but it seemed an appropriate time to bring back the show and talk about things where we talk about weather, where we talk about science, where we talk about climate or any type of anything else that we can think of. Tonight's topic or today, depending on when you're listening to this, we've had a lot of requests from this in the past. Since I took over as chief meteorologist, what was our past chief meteorologist, Mr. Patrick Corr, who's now enjoying semi-retirement. He used to do the fearless winter weather forecast. Well, we have gotten the information from you. You asked for it, and so so now it is back once again on the What I Want to Know show. We're going to take a look at the winter weather forecast and see what is happening when it comes to anything involving weather across the area and give you a general idea as to what we think may be going on. Now, two things I want to be pointing out. Number one, again, anything and everything in what is going to be presented to you here tonight can and will change. Just because we're talking about this around Thanksgiving does not mean it's going to be the same thing going into January or February. We might even do an update of this as we head into 2025. We'll see how that works. Number two, we are not going to be talking about how much snow we're going to get the entire season. We're not going to say the next winter storm will be arriving on December 18th at 425 in the morning and will drop 3.2 inches of snow in your backyard. If we start talking about that, that is something that we do not do because it can be very misconstrued. If I were to say we're going to have between three and seven heavy winter snows, blizzard types conditions, anything like that, then someone out there watching may take that the wrong way to say, oh, well, he said three, and it actually had 12 snows in the entire News 12 viewing area, so he was wrong. And we get that a lot to where people say, well, you said it was going to be three to five inches in my particular backyard, and we got 2.75, so you don't know what you're talking about with winter weather forecasting. It is not an exact science. We can get a little bit of information, but forecasting things weeks or even months out is a very dangerous thing. And if you've never tried anything in the way of winter weather forecasting, let me invite you to be, let me be the first to tell you, you should really give it a try because of the fact that it's a very humbling experience. And if you've never given it a shot, I urge you to give it a, a, an absolute try. So we'll talk about what we can generally see and what I generally see over the next season as we go into winter. And unfortunately, over the next several seasons, there's going to be some fluctuation, obviously. But for right now, what we're looking at is less and less in the way of cooler weather and also with the potential of rainfall. Now, again, that will change from season to season and year to year and decade to decade. But for right now, the trend is really not looking good at this point because of the fact of a couple of factors going on. Uh, the outlook at this time, which is where I usually point people towards to get more information from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, tons of great details about what is going on with the weather. Uh, canceling this as part of a certain project is one of the most short-sighted things I've ever heard of. NOAA does an incredible job of forecasting public weather safety, information for shipping and commerce and all sorts of other things. Getting rid of NOAA is a big mistake, and I hope we don't do that. But in this particular issuance, in the last few years when you've asked for the winter weather forecast, this is where I would point you to. And the reasons why is because NOAA does a great job of taking a look at a ton of information. Now, in just a little bit, we'll take a look at these maps in detail. But for right now, it's showing a lot of changes in the drier and warmer side of things. All of this information is available from the Climate Prediction Center. If you've never been there, you can go to NOAA and search CPC or Climate Prediction Center to find out more. There is a variation in portions of the southern atmosphere into around the equator. It's called the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO. What you're looking at, what we should usually see around this area here is a lot of warm water. 
that's called an El Nino or Spanish for the child. That is where the warm water sets up and causes winter weather patterns to go one direction because the moisture and the warmer conditions coming in off the Pacific and parts of the Gulf and the area down toward the Caribbean can affect weather with heavier snows, colder conditions one way. But if you take a look right off of South America, we are seeing a very big cooling trend here. So it's going from El Nino to La Nina. It does not look to be a strong El Nino, uh, La Nina at this time. The colder waters of La Nina can affect weather in sort of the opposite direction. It can drive moisture away from certain locations that usually get it. It's responsible for causing ski seasons in parts of the Rockies and the American West and other parts of the continent to fail because they didn't get enough snow because El Nino drove the snow away or La Nina did exactly the opposite on things like that. Now, studying this, and what is going to be going on with this from noahsclimate.gov. You can see more about how this is going to affect. And with La Nina in play, a winter La Nina pattern, this is where, again, it gets very interesting to take a look at because a typical El Nino winter can allow the jet stream to cause warmer and drier conditions well up into portions of Canada and the northern U.S. For us, it could be colder and it could also be wetter down toward our area of the country. Now, a La Nina winter coming up, which is what we're expecting, a weak one but still possible, is going to be causing, could be, again, a drier and a warmer pattern to shape up Again, the wetter conditions, you can see some of that green down to and around portions of, let me get my picture out of the way there, a possibility of some wetter conditions for the Pacific Northwest and for us. But it looks like the dry and the warm conditions are going to be winning out at this time. Again, more information about what this means from climate.gov, a great website to go to. Ton of weather information also available from the National Weather Service in Morristown. If you'd like to check out and see what's going on with what is happening into and around our area, including the normals that happen at this time of the year, we can take a look back at rain on Thanksgiving, the warmest and the coldest temperatures. We can take a look at the snowiest time frame that we have had uh, at various locations. And the snowiest time frame here, uh, most snow in one season was 22.2 inches in 1917-1918, that winter season. Most snow in a year came down into the season, the period of time of 1993, the superstorm that rolled through and dropped 20 inches in a month. 18 and a half inches in a day. So we can get the record amount of snow can be quite heavy if all the gears line up. What happens though when things start kind of going off the rails? Well right now remember that in hurricane season the sea surface temperatures, the gauge down here showing again uh, temperatures of about 82 plus in the dark orange category, that is where we see very warm waters. Now we are not too far away from the Gulf, but we're close enough to where when you stand next to a stove and you're cooking food, you can feel some of that infrared energy coming off of it. It looks like this may be supplying us some of the heat, and that's going to keep things very warm for us as we go into the next couple of months. Yes, the temperatures are cooling down. You can see that on the northern and eastern rim of the Gulf of Mexico. Eventually, they will cool down a little bit, but because of climate change, human-induced climate change, the temperatures are very warm. That's why we had an above-normal season for everything going on. So for right now, from what it looks like on the interactive display here, we do see the potential of maybe the possibility of, again, very much on the warm and also dry side. So temperatures will be above normal according to the statistics of what we see in a typical La Nina year. And the very good chance of moisture will be well back to our north and it looks like into around portions of the area close to the Pacific Northwest. So that is where we again could be seeing portions of the problem there. This is a very good website to go to to check out more about what is going on. Again, for what we're seeing, and let's go out again for the season for temperature, above normal possibilities for temperature for our area of the country. For precipitation, 
We're seeing also, again, right in the white category, that is, again, equal chances of where we may see the potential of anything involving rainfall. So we may be right to normal to just below normal, but El La Nina and climate change, I think, are going to be knocking things off by just a little bit. From Climate Central, the more very warm winter days, the season due to climate change that is heating up the most is winter time. Winter is getting less cold and less in the way of snowfall. And right across the eastern United States as a whole, we are seeing a lot of very much warmer winter days. For around Chattanooga, we're looking at six to nine winter weather days. You may be saying to yourself, okay, well, climate change is a hoax, so why should I believe this? Well, take a look at the data for Chattanooga from Climate Central. Back in 1970, we saw the temperatures. Again, yes, there is the fluctuation going up and down. But what you really need to look at is this white line here showing the mean temperature going upwards. In 1970, the early 1970s, average was about close to 20 degrees to 30 degrees. For an average, or for more for winter days above normal, we spent about 25 to 30 days above normal through winter. Now we are experiencing over 50 above normal days. Again, thanks to climate change. How about the average winter temperatures just in general? Taking a look at that from Climate Central, and we're seeing again the temperatures back on average into the early 70s. This is over half a century worth of data. And we are looking at the numbers heading upwards again. So from the high 30s as an average on the area of 1970, 54 years later, we are going upwards to 6.6 above the area. Let me move my picture out of the way here so we can see more about that. 6.6 degrees average temperature higher. We are going upwards on the temperatures, and this is something that cannot be ignored, and this is something that is going to be affecting our weather. A lot of people that I've talked to say, oh, we don't get as much snow as we used to. That's true. We have some big snows like in 1993 that raise the average, but on average through the years, we are looking at less snowfall, we are looking at warmer temperatures, and that trend is going to continue, unfortunately, because of how things stack up in the atmosphere. We are doing this to our planet. So what does that mean in general? So as we go into the course of the rest of this forecast, where do we usually typically pick up the most amount of precipitation? This graphic from the PRISM Climate Group, you can see the Cumberland Plateau, southern middle Tennessee, and then right along the spine of the Appalachians. That is where we get the most precipitation. That's a 30 year plus or 20 year plus 20 to 30 year plus average right there uh, again from statistics that we get from the National Weather Service. This is something that is again quite important because we are getting into uh, that time frame of the year where we see the temperatures heading upwards uh, after winter and going into spring, but it's going to be much on the warmer side. Snowfall days, we're going from just one snowfall day around November to 2.2 average snowfall days on average what we get throughout the year. That peaks in January, goes down a little bit in February, and tanks from March into April as the warmer weather makes its way on through. Snowfall for Chattanooga does go up and peaks between January, February, and May. Really, again, January into February and also now into March. That's where our snowiest season comes up. But I really think at this point in time that we are not going to be able to see much in the way of winter weather. Notice I did not say we are not going to get winter weather. I said that we're going to be getting less winter weather. And I think for right now, we could get a couple of very good storms. We could get a lot of snow, no question about it. We could pick up some freezing rain potential uh, in the area, sleet, things like that, a combination mixture of those precipitation events. But I think the chances of us experiencing more of that in the long term is very low. And I think it's getting worse every single year the more the atmosphere continues to warm up. So there is a chance for some winter weather, but I'm thinking there's going to be less and less chances this season, next season, going on into, again, the next several years, as long as the atmosphere continues to gain carbon dioxide and we continue to heat up. Again, I did not say we are not getting winter weather. What I did say was that as of right now, lesser chance of anything really happening. 
couple of storms, maybe. A lot of them giving us a really snowy season, that's possible. I don't see it as being in the cards for this particular season. How about the potential of anything involving uh, a white Christmas? Uh, thanks to the National Weather Service in Quad Cities for putting together this graphic. And this is information, again, on a 30-year time scale. The national, as an example, the National White Christmas Map. You take a look, excuse me, you take a look at what we're seeing, again, for uh, this particular area of the country. And you see that for us, uh, we don't have much of a chance. That dark gray color is a less than 10% chance uh, all the way on through. The Cumberland Plateau... The Appalachians, Northeast Tennessee, Western North Carolina, even Northern Georgia stands about an 11 to 25 percent possibility of picking up the heaviest amount of anything involving snowfall. It is possible we could wind up with this, but for right now, again, it's not looking good. It's statistically for us around here, I believe it's about 5 percent or less the possibility of getting a white Christmas. The possibility of getting anything else in the way of decent amounts of snowfall is going to be low, I think, for this season and lower going into the next several years because of that combination of what happens. Now, if El Nino comes back next year, we could see a much different story. If we get a stronger La Nina, we could see an even different opposite type of story, as I showed you earlier. So it is possible we could see a lot more snowfall with certain storms if we get enough moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. If we get a ton of moisture, again, across portions of the area uh, into and around uh, from the Gulf or the Atlantic and a storm system comes raging on down from the Great Plains states, mixes with that moisture, brings in cold air, yes, we could get smacked again if this, when the conditions were right in 1993, we wound up with a ton of snowfall. And again, that information, courtesy of the National Weather Service in Morristown, that was one of the snowiest periods on record and we could get even more than that if the conditions were correct but for right now i don't see that going on i see us getting a lot less than normal and i think that's what we're going to be winding up with again with the potential of seeing both very warm conditions warmer than usual and then also looking at that dry potential into the course of the next several months that's what's happening now. All of this data will change from period to time. So check back with News 12 and we'll keep you updated as to what is going on. Let me remind you also that if you would like to see more about this, you may be picking up all of our information here. Uh, you can find out more through our website uh, at wdef.com slash weather. Uh, you can go, I'm going to be posting this and have already posted it on most of my social media pages and we'll find out more again about what's happening. We'll post updates through the rest of the season going toward the end of the year and afterwards. So if there's something going on with changes, we will let you know about that. Questions, concerns, ideas, uh, if you want to argue about climate change, great. You know where to find me. Email address at the bottom of the screen, aonic at wdef.com. Our website, again, wdef.com slash weather. Uh, it is something that, again, we cannot deny. It is happening with climate change, and that's having an effect on our season. Summer's getting hotter. Winter's getting less cold. La Nina playing a bigger role in what goes on with snow potential and winter weather potential across all of the eastern United States, not just here in the News 12 viewing area, but a lot of other locations could see even more than even more snow because of La Nina. We could see a lot less, and I think with the changing conditions on climate, next decade or two, we may see much warmer winters. Colder temperatures may be a memory in the next 50 to 75 years through wintertime, and that's going to have a lot of impact on our crops, on commerce, on a lot of other things, and it's going to have an effect on whether or not your kids are able to build as many snowmen in the front yard as you might have remembered you growing up with a long time ago. So a lot to consider here. That's what I see for right now. If that changes from the Climate Prediction Center, we will let you know. 
and we'll keep you updated again on everything involving weather through the holiday season and beyond. Thanks for joining us for, again, the What I Want to Know show special winter weather forecast edition. Again, we'll have more with News 12 throughout the rest of the holiday season on climate, on weather safety, on what's going on with your forecast and how it affects things going on here. So stay tuned for more with News 12 on air and online. Direct from the News 12 studios in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee with the What I Want to Know show. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us. And again, stay tuned to News 12 on air and online for the latest weather information.